Hello, beautiful human. Uh, I'm Zach. That is Dan. And we welcome to the studio uh, Franklin Jonas, a.k.a. Sura. Hey! hey. Thank you for having me back. Yeah. Well, I guess in person for the first time. But. Yeah, this is, this is, yes. But to be honest, I, I told you, like, it, it, your last appearance on our show was so vivid in my memory and, and rather iconic in nature that I forgot <laughs> that it happened over Zoom. It was, uh... It was one of the best interviews I've ever been in and ever done, for wow. sure. I uh, I was very grateful to to be there and now to be here. Takes, I get to be on the couch, dress, and so does he. Dress, yes, okay. Is this? <laughs> are you the sewer rat or is the sewer rat uh, its own thing? It's kind of both in a way. It started off as sort of a um, an idea around like a character that I could make music from the perspective of, and then the two sort of melded together, and then a lot of ideas that came and went of, you know, a mascot that can't take the head off and da da da, da and on and on and on. But uh, now I just, I don't know, it's sort of the two of us have very much uh, 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 Dragon Ball Z melded. <laughs> why do you feel, well, why did you feel like at first that you needed to use uh, a, another vehicle such as a rodent that scurries around the subways <laughs> in New York City uh, to, to release music? I think... Um, well, there was a lot uh, to that, I guess. I started making the music when um, quarantine hit, and I would listen to all the demos on the subway. And, uh, you know, there's sort of a kinship that can come with riding the subway so much that you you either hate the rats or you kind of think they're cute, and I was on that side of the fence. Um, <laughs> and the EP originally was called Subway Rat, and then it eventually morphed into Sewer Rat because that sounded better. Uh, but... I think that, you know, there was at first a long time of debating if I could release music under my name or if there'd be a character, if there'd be a pseudonym or something along those lines um, because of the association and, and the immediate uh, comparison that would happen as a result to my brother's music. And I think that uh, I wanted to release music under my name because I felt like that was more of a statement but I also wanted, because I was so fond of the idea of having a character, that it sort of melded the two together. You start kind of loosely making music, though, in, is it 2017, right? You start posting stuff on SoundCloud. Yeah, way back, way back. I mean, I used to be, I used to make, like, uh, trap beats in college. Uh, and then uh, I would tr post them on uh, SoundCloud and, like, reach out to... Little B or people like that and try and sell them beats. Shanghai Noon. Yeah, Shanghai Noon, man. That's uh it was with a bunch of uh Avatar the Last Airbender samples in that. Sick. Yeah, yeah. So well, okay. But you, you twenty seventeen all the way to twenty twenty three. Big difference. Yeah, because I've long time. pick up and quit music and pick up and quit music. I, I worked as a runner at a recording studio here in LA. I went to school for audio engineering. Um and, you know, I would be really fond of the idea of making my own music and then really not fond of it sometimes. Um, and then sort of in a fit of I'm in New York and I am in quarantine and I have nothing else to do and I'm already spending 15 hours a day playing Minecraft. I might as well do something creative. <laughs> well, I mean, you were also making TikToks at the time because when you first came mm. on the show, like that was the... <laughs> yeah. Right? It was TikToks. There was no music this was to discuss. That was before TikTok, though. TikTok came like uh, almost a year after that. Wait, or, what? well, six, seven months. Because I didn't. the TikTok stuff didn't happen until around, I want to say, September, October of 2020. And I started making the music in like February when things were starting to shut down in New York. Got it. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I have no concept of time anymore. It's it's changed. Time has changed. Rough. <laughs> time has really changed. Especially 2020 is a weird one. 2020 and 2021. But so you really did have two creative outlets, right? Because like you're making music during quarantine, but also at the same time you do figure out TikTok, right? Yeah, and then a lot of the TikTok experience I would put into these songs that, after working on the EP and like a lot of the early songs have now made it to what we released, but I would continue to sort of uh, put, it was really an emotional outlet more than anything else, I'd, I'd say, uh, without the intention of releasing any of the music ever. Um, it really was sort of just for me um, and was going to release it potentially, if anything, under the subway rat persona. Uh, 
And I think that in my eyes, there's sort of a, an honoring to that to then release it under the, uh, the name of Surat, right? And then have this character be a part of it. It's pretty cool. Paying ode to what the inspiration was, if you will. <laughs> Where, where'd you get that costume anyway? I was one I of got, the <laughs> 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 um, We rented it at first from like a New York, like a proper New York mascot place. Uh, and, you know, like Times Square, it's a Times Square rat costume that you could take pictures in and rent. But um, <laughs> then uh, it was so much cheaper to buy it. And they said, if I buy it, then I could bring it on tour with me and wow. perform in it, which I do, which is so hot. So hot. Yeah, you got to get like uh, one of those vests i'm sure you've seen like the inner workings of disney mm -hmm. you know those characters they got vests on there was definitely conversations about that we played a show in uh in tampa that was so hot and it was an open door venue um it was like a hundred and oh, some dude, degrees you're risking health i know yeah but the thing is surprisingly on uh this run of a tour that i did with hobo johnson just uh just, we just finished it but um I didn't have any scares, luckily. However, the first couple shows that I played with this, most nights I would have a scare of like, of if I was going to faint. Uh, mm -hmm. One night in particular, I got really, really, really close to to having like a full faint. Dude. Suffer for your art, though. Come on. <laughs> Suffer for your art. Yeah, like there's like a high there. There's like a risk factor. I get exactly, it. exactly. And, you're, and also, I think there's something that's really uh, experiential about someone coming on stage in a, in a full body <laughs> rat costume um and i think that you know we try at least i've tried i'm very new to live shows um i've only done like now 13 or 14 in my entire life and they've all been in the past couple months um but learned pretty quickly that i wanted to make an experience out of it um my dad was like a pastor and there's something that's so visceral about you know hearing gospel music and like and being in a room that like feels like there's something happening or that you're working towards. And, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people, especially in positions where they're starting to come up into what they do musically, they just get comfortable standing up there and singing their songs and, or, or whatnot. And I think that I really wanted to try something as different as I could and something, as I said, really experiential. Um, and it seems like we were able to like, somewhat accomplish that in a way, which is nice. How many songs do you make between 2017 and releasing or finalizing this EP? So, so, so many and so many that like are unfinished. Um, we originally, the EP was an album. Um, and then it was like, all right, let's condense it, uh, and just sort of put out the songs that like are with the few people that we've shown, like testing the best with them. Um, and there was about five or six left over um from the album that aren't out yet uh and then i would say in the 40s or 50s to like unfinished whether it's in a demo phase or whether it's been into production phases or not who are you showing to help even narrow any of this down my girlfriend mostly <laughs> mostly my <laughs> girlfriend sometimes uh my manager barb um a lot of my musician friends, I'll show them. Um, I really try and show like my family, minus my dad. My dad is a great sounding board, but I try and show my family as close to a finished product as I can and then get their thoughts on it and then rework from there because I think that I want to come in it. I don't want to uh, sort of hinge on their uh, expertise too much, right? But I do value their opinion more than anyone else's i mean like joe wrote cake by the ocean nick wrote jealous like those are massive hits you know they have my entire life has been experiencing their music and loving it and learning from it and so i think that like with uh a lot of the songs i waited until we were in the mixing phase but we did a lot of production in sorry a lot of production in mixing uh because i would show people what we do and i'd be like wait you have this idea and that's genius. We should add that. Or we should rework it and we should do with this and that and the other thing. Um, but m I don't show too many people. I think that I try and let it be as close to a completely isolated project as possible. Who's the hardest person to play music for? Um, I, th I mean, I would say 
tie between Nick and Joe because I respect their opinions so much and I, I look up to them so much. Um, and I just really showing them is something that to me is like, you know, you're showing your heroes, your hard work that's inspired by them. So you, and I, and, and they're also like so knowledgeable and so, um, wise to this industry and to, to music itself. And so I think I, uh, I get really in my head about how, uh, they might perceive it or how they might receive it. Um, but they've been such big supporters, man. They've been amazing. I just saw the other day um, on their tour right now in their book, like they have like a little booklet that comes uh, with your seat. And in it, there's like a full page, uh, like graduation day uh, yearbook spread of, of Sewer Rat, which is just like <laughs> so special and so kind. And, and it just, you know, they're, uh, like I said, they're my heroes, man. And there was never a world in which I didn't... Um, didn't make music you know how special is that like why am i gonna cry like why is that like no because to be honest like in a, in a you can have like it could have gone so many different roads do you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. like you i'm sure you've seen so many different oh yeah roads <laughs> i've been i've been around this a long time and, and, and really like in what hurts my heart so deeply is like it, it could have been the opposite like you, there could have been like deep resent that like forms over long periods of time mm -hmm. that like you know but I, I think we all owe that to like our parents our parents are just so good like my dad has my mom too they both just taught us so much and, and imparted so many lessons of 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 love and care and compassion on each other um and i think that you know i've seen i've been around this i mean i i've been around the music industry for a, so much <laughs> of my life um and it's uh i'm really really lucky and grateful to to be in my position and have it be not just my position of, of like being loved and accepted and <laughs> and have compassion towards me but also like on the opposite side to be in the position of even having an opportunity that I have as a result of how much hard work they've put into this this long and legendary career I mean in the modern zeitgeist they're the bit they're like the greats oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. the greats of today. Yeah. Like they're yeah. yeah. They just sold out two nights at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> insane. And they've already sold out Dodger Stadium. Like no. what? <laughs> that's crazy. Now the Jonas brothers are forever. Yes, exactly. But, by the way, and you you talk so beautifully about it, but like the other thing to keep in mind is like it must have still have been hard, right? Like that still mm -hmm. comes with its own it ebbs and flows, dude. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's hasn't always been easy. It hasn't always been like the tightest thing ever. <laughs> but um, I think that, you know, I've done so much work on myself and on my life and on my mental health to be able to have the perspective that I have. There's been moments in my life where there was intense resentment or there has been moments of my life where there's been, you know, all sorts of emotions and feelings that come naturally with like puberty. <laughs> and, and by the way, all valid. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And uh, and I think that it took a, uh, a long time for me to be like, wow, like I'm in the greatest position of anyone I know. And not only that, but I also have one of the best relationships with my family of anyone that's ever been in any situation close to mine. Like I am so eternally grateful for for that and for the uh, the love that has been shared in, in our family. And I think that it's it's a beautiful thing, but it's been hard at times for sure. But that's life. But that's life, dude. That's life. Yeah. That's how it goes. Why do we go from Frankie to Franklin? So people have taken it somewhat more like I, I it's more that I introduce myself as Franklin now. There was like people, um there's been people who have been around who get really like, I'm so sorry I called you Frankie. Like, <laughs> no, I've known you for 20 years of my life and you've called me Frankie the entire like I'm it's chill like it's cool <laughs> dude it's still technically my name I think it was more of like a you know I, I it's part of that whole pseudonym t conversation that we started with of of I I wanted somewhat of a reinvention um and I wanted something that felt adult and felt more like who I am now and someone who's uh you know 
courageous, right? And like presidential and is as presidential as you can be in a rat costume. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do, you, I mean, that you could go in. <laughs> yeah, I guess it'd, it'd be a, it'd be a strange <laughs> campaign for sure. <laughs> um, but no, I think that um, I, I came into it with the idea of sort of being the guy who could do what the adventure and the, and the, and the very uh, strange and new journey that I was going to go on. And like, to me, that was Franklin, who I was born as and who I, you know, the guy who, when I was in trouble growing up, it wasn't Frankie, <laughs> Franklin, Nathaniel Jonas. And like, I think that, there was a conversation of it was going to be Franklin Nathaniel Jonas and have like the full name too of like, but who is the guy who could have the guts to put on a rat costume and go perform with a children's choir at the Troubadour? Like, yeah. like you know what I mean? And like, I think that that was me and, and I think that that's Franklin. And so that's sort of where that came from. Can we dissect that a little bit? Because yes. it's been the talk of the studio is the consistency of the ch a children's choir. They're amazing. Yeah, they're great. Shouts out, Musica. You're amazing. I love every one of you. Um, it's the coolest thing ever. But is it attached to something deeper? Yes, for sure. I think that that might be in some way, uh, at least it, a lot of, there was a lot of like mental gymnastics that happened in the studio that I guess like only I and my producer, Charlie, shouts out, Charlie, Manager Tigers, amazing, Charlie Brand. Um, that like only I and he know about, right? <laughs> that like I, I, but there's, those voices are, um, a lot of that mentality came from sort of a child self, right? And there's um, a lot of the songs like uh, Grow Up on the EP, the first song, that is, you wouldn't get it really from the lyrics, but it's about a perspective of this experience of being a little Nepo baby self who grew up in the in the music industry and grew up uh, around this life and, and sort of the trials and tribulation that come as a result of being sort of between two worlds, right? And growing up, understanding that your life has been very different, but also trying your best to have as normal of a life as possible. And at some point, the growing up idea is that you you have to be exactly in the middle and be who you are and that's something but the voices of the children really does uh come from sort of a voice that i can't have and that's the kid who like you know i talked about it recently but the first time that i uh was ever gonna sing i was in like this child actor school here in LA um, with a bunch of kids that were at that party that I saw you at the other night, the variety <laughs> party. Like a bunch of people were there that I went to middle school and elementary school with. Um, but uh, there, there was like a talent show and I decided that I wanted to sing My Name is Jonas. And that was gonna be the first time that I ever performed in front of anyone. And then the principal of the school invited the press. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. And so I obviously didn't do it, but um, you know, also, those children. What a, well, how Hollywood? How Hollywood? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but there's like there's a documentary. I don't want to dox it, but there's a doc documentary that touches on child acting, and the school is in that documentary, and it is not painted in a very good light. Really? No. Um, but yeah, I mean, like that is. Uh, those voices in my eyes, if I could categorize it as one moment, those are the kids singing My Name is Jonas back in, or did that didn't get to sing My oh. Name is Jonas. The Weezer song, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Classic, classic. So it's really, that's what I was saying. Like, a, 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 my first thought was like a lost voice. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly, exactly. There's a couple different things like that on the record that, and the samples too, a lot of the samples are that as well of like things that I can't say. Is that a Demi Lovato sample on Cherub from Camp Rock? It'd be more categorized as an interpolation uh, <laughs> <laughs> for legal reasons. Um, we definitely re-recorded it, uh, but um, yeah, man. <laughs> Originally, there was like 40 or 50 or 60 samples that I had sent to my producer, Charlie, in the studio and was like, we need to put every single one of these Vine sounds in this song as much and as like frequent as possible. <laughs> there was everything. There was, there was, there was, I dropped my croissant. There was like, it covered so many bases, but that was one of the three or four that made it into the final product. Yeah. So.
Yeah, thanks for noticing. Why, why did that song need all these samples? Like, what role do they play in the song? That song was, uh, it's about a time in my life um, when I was doing TikTok. And I think it came from a perspective of, like, that's the voice of how, do, how would you know that? Or how would I express that there was that part of me that was so um, devoted to the internet that caused my brain to, like, change its wiring a lot and like how do i express that voice and that was a way to do it was through the samples in that song how do you realize that it's changed the wiring of your brain you stop doing it so much <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like whoa man like i thought the, about the world so differently and uh and i'm i'm much happier uh not like posting every day 24 7 and and completely devoting myself to uh, people that aren't in the room and like that's something that we've had to deal with of like how do we promote this and it's like honestly like just being in a room with people and performing it means the world to me and like it doesn't matter how many people are in the room but I feel like I can create an experiential moment that I might not be able to if I'm singing to the camera in my closet saying I wrote the best song about not wanting to grow up here's how it goes <laughs> you know and or lip syncing dress as a sewer rat in a car although that kind of is Dance. also that would be tight that would be tight and i think that there's there's, there's have you a, done that did i just insult you by chance? no 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 no, okay, no, no. that's something that i'm gonna steal now because okay. uh, that's a good idea no i think that it's there's a duality to it you know and i think that finding what's good for your mental health and good for you as an individual and how you handle all that is important it takes time to figure that out it takes time and a lot of sessions with your therapist yeah a yeah. lot of life and a lot of like like <laughs> trials man yeah and a lot of errors a lot of ups and downs and a lot of uh uh mistakes and a lot of choices that you live with then you move on and, and like that's what wisdom comes from. wisdom does not come from succeeding <laughs> ever <laughs> it's true <laughs> like <laughs> at all um it comes and, from failing or just barely making by yeah or succeeding and then failing yeah and then how deeply that affects you especially in success like you can be the most successful person in the world i've i've and i've make one tiny mistake on one little thing and then it'll eat you alive and but that brings wisdom of saying like oh man like focus on the good times man focus on the good things and all the rest that i did right and there's been times when i messed up i, I mean like i play keys when we play and and there's been times when I'm playing the wrong song and I don't realize <laughs> till and it's just muscle memory. And, you know, you laugh about it because, or you're, if you're only able to, if you can say, yeah, but like the next song I like did pretty good, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it seemed like nobody noticed. So. By the way, Sewer Rat is waiting for your ears. It's sitting in the description. There's a link. You can listen to it all on Amazon Music. Um, Hoboken. Yeah. What do you feel like you're undeserving of? Um, well, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for that plug. That's so sweet of you. I really, that's why you're here. I know, but I'm just grateful. You just, <laughs> yeah. you made, you make my, you make my day. Thank you. Oh, that's, but I appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. you're welcome. Yeah, of course. No, um, nobody's ever thanked me for reminding the world to listen. No, but nice. that means something to me, man. It's, it's, uh, it's, I, I made this for whoever would listen. And the, when people do listen or people want to listen, it, 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 uh, it, it's very special. And so thank you. Um, you should listen, by the way, get really <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot. It's pretty good. I um. So your other question, um, love, man, love. That's Every what I thought. I was like, I didn't really, I didn't want to like assume, but that's where my mind was going. And also happiness and mm -hmm. joy and peace, like peace at the end of the day. But is peace being over, not wanting to understand why you're undeserving? Um, in a way, yeah, because I think that the the cloud of um just. Uh, chaos in thought that comes from wondering if you're you're okay and are meant to be in this world um, can be healed by just um, someone who you trust accepting you the way that you have always wanted to be accepted and that's I mean that song I made for my girlfriend um, and she uh, we were we just started dating and and I made that for her as a gift and uh, a very early version of it. Um, but she was like, you can't not do this with your life. Like, why are you not releasing this music? Why are you not pushing it? And that, as a result of saying those words in a way, like sort of a mantra or a prayer in, in the song, right? Writing these these lines about uh, I'm over, like wondering if I'm, if I'm undeserving. 
um, I then was told that I am deserving and that uh, it was brought to my attention that I need to do this. And it was because of that belief that I'm able to do this, right? And be here, so. That's special. It's amazing. And I'm just, I'm so grateful and I and I owe everything to, to that conversation and to, you know, I get to live out my dreams now because all it took was one person just being like, yeah, dude. Yeah, you are deserving. But in life, it really does only take one person. <laughs> yeah. I don't it, like quote Lady Gaga, but like it does. It does, man. It does. And it's, you know, like I said, I've messed up a couple keyboards, little moments <laughs> on tour. And there's still, if I can see someone there in the audience who's still smiling or still in any way enjoying the experience of it, right? Um, that takes me out of it. And I'm no longer in that that sad place i'm no longer oh i messed up oh like i can't play piano i have to stop playing piano on stage Duh. no i'm like okay i'm gonna get better for that person in case they ever come back to a show that's that's the right way to improve that's hey wisdom comes from mistake <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking daniel what role did hobo can play in the relationship between you guys um it's definitely like a like an anthem of our relationship or i mean like i don't like sit there and like listen to my music but sometimes like just the other day uh, i heard it being played from the shower and that was a really special thing you know and uh her family is uh plays it a lot and loves it and like they all came to my philly show and like man they were screaming the lyrics <laughs> and it was the most special thing in the world to me uh, you know it's um i think to have it be accepted and, and appreciated and and, and uh, seen, especially by, like, the people closest to her, is something that, like, oh, I mean, a, a, an old friend of hers came to the New York show, and, like, during the performance, I saw her in the audience and started crying. And it was because of, I know how much we've been through, how much they've been through, and how much this song is about those relationships and those trials and tribulations to get to where we are now, so... How, how does the Pee Wee Herman line fit into it? So um, on our first, uh, well, not first, but uh, the date where I asked her to be my girlfriend, I, uh, I rented a suit because I didn't have one that fit me. And <laughs> uh, and it wasn't until I put it on because it had like a red tie that I quickly realized that it was a Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> uh, it was like I was cosplaying as Pee Wee Herman. But yeah, so that's where the line, that's where that line comes from. <laughs> that's fucking funny. You had yeah. to rent a suit? Yeah, I did, yeah. You didn't have a suit? I did, but they didn't fit me. Oh. Yeah. You know, I, I have suits from like when I had, like when I was younger, right? And that was like at a point where like, or from just, you know, bodies change. And I just come back from, um, I like did like a train hopping backpacking journey. Um, in That's Europe. fucking healthy. It was. It was, the, it was, uh, that's awesome. You know, you learn a lot of lessons doing that. And like it was some of the best and some of the most, uh, crazy moments of my life because i did it solo um, really yeah yeah it was wild but it was fun it was amazing it was incredible it was an um, it was i mean i spent the whole time at that point i wanted to finish writing a novel and so i was writing that the whole time and was writing about my experience and doing like a jack kerouac on the road sort of thing um wait that's wild yeah i think it was how, fun, how long did you do that for uh four and a half five months what? Yeah. It's a just long like time. Disappeared off the map and just like was like, I'm just gonna go ride a train. Where's From it? when to when? What year was um this? this was uh twenty twenty two, I think. Twenty twenty one. Thank you. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Uh and I started in September and I came back in January. Where'd you go? Iceland, and then I ended up in Italy, and then uh, I was going to go take the uh, ferry from Iceland to Denmark, but it was so expensive, and I wanted to spend more time in uh, in Iceland anyways, so I stayed there, and then found like a $30, I was going to go to Northern Europe, but then I was like, I found this $30 flight on Wiz to, to Italy, to Naples, and so I said, all right, I'll go there instead, <laughs> and then ended up doing the Amalfi, and then I uh, visited uh, my sister Priyanka. She was filming Citadel in uh, Valencia, so I came and was like, yo, what up? <laughs> uh, and uh, then I went to um, to Bordeaux from there, and then up to Paris, spent a lot of time in Paris, and then 
went around, but yeah. Sick. There was a couple more places, but it was. That's, it was, you grow as a person. So much. I, I, I'm alive time. today because of that experience. Like ah. it truly was, it was profound. And, uh, you know, it's not, it, it's, you're alone. And so it's not always great, but it's definitely, you, your entire brain, it's like you just experience, everyone was said that I eat, pray, love, was eat, pray, loving in, in Europe right now. <laughs> so it's, uh, I'm really grateful for the experience. I, I owe so much to that. And it's just, it's crazy to think back on it now and be like, yeah, like I was just gone for like four and a half, five months. That's just awesome. By myself. And like at one point, like just like turned off my location and was just sort of like floating. That's both like terrifying and freeing and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. and super terrifying. Super terrifying. God. Yeah. I wish I can do that. You know, I think that it's definitely don't do it for like half a year, but you should do it at some point. Yeah. Some version of it. I don't know. Maybe not do as many like, like really budget hostels. Cause like I came, <laughs> no, I came no. back and like was <laughs> not in a good place like health wise as a result of it. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah, it was. Cause there's like a lot of mold and like, there's a lot of like, you know, uh, there's stuff that's just yeah. in, in the walls. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. But hey, it's for, for, for the, for the bit man, for the journey. Yeah, I, was for the say, journey like, dude. I mean, did you like tell your, I don't know, your, your brothers that you were, I don't know, your sister, I don't know anybody, like $30, you, they could have helped. I'm sure they would have helped. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think, I think, Part of why I did it was that I didn't want them. Yeah, to. no, I, th yeah. That's, Part of it is to it. escape it all okay, and to just got go it. on your own and, and see how far you can make, like, the money that I made from doing the TikTok stuff. Like, how far can I make that go on this wild journey? Um, and ended up being four and a half, five months. You spread her thin. Yeah, I did. I was, I mean, like, there was some nights where I, like, s would sleep in the train station waiting for a train and, like, you know, I was, like, doing it. I had, like, a 60-pound backpack on the whole time. Jesus like, Christ. I came back ripped. Like, I was so, my body changed so much. That's why I couldn't wear my, any of my suits. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle here. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's how we got here. <laughs> that's how we got here. That's how we got here. I knew that I was saying that, going on the backpacking journey for a reason. That is why. Yeah. Did you make any friends? Yeah, I made a couple. I almost ended up going, I met a guy in, uh, in uh, Iceland and there was a point at which we like bought a ticket to go to <laughs> Senegal together. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, we were going to go to uh, Gambi, Gambia and then take the river and then end up in Senegal for a little bit. Of course. But then we're, our flight was out of Belgium and the day before or two days before the flight, um, Europe got locked down because... Omicron flew uh, into Belgium mm. and so we were, and it was like he was he still wanted to go and I was like listen I would like to but you have like a U European passport like you could probably get like a yeah, refugee flight back like I'm either gonna have to go back to the states which is unlikely I'll probably just have to stay there for like three months and I don't <laughs> know if I can do that so ended up not doing that but I made a bunch of friends I mean I I, I, I you meet so many people doing that yeah. The most. So many. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. It was and, amazing. And then when you came back, was it like, okay, grind time on this album? Is that kind of how it worked? So I came back, uh, and then, uh, like my immediately, uh, started, uh, I mean like the first, I mean a couple weeks after I got back, I made Hoboken mm -hmm. and then, uh, I had, that's when I called the label that I already signed to and was like, all right. I'm ready to do this. And now like, let's, <laughs> let's rock. Let's do it. Um, and then over the course of some time, I worked on a, uh, a show that is out oh. in the world right now. Yeah. I don't know if I can talk about it because of the, mm. the, uh, um, the strikes. It's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hung. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cool. <laughs> I got it. I know. I know the vibes. Um, and, uh, but yeah. And then, so from that started working on the, this album. How do you know it was finished? We ran out of time in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, all right, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. I would have liked it to be like, you know, 30 more songs, but let's, let's rock with these. <laughs> and then, uh, ended up doing two ish, two and a half weeks of mixing that like I was there for every day, which truly made my mind go insane. Uh, like I lost my mind for a while as a result of doing that. Because it's hard to just sit there and, like, tweak yeah. 
everything and like and also in some cases some of these songs are really emotional and really like deep and hard for me to have written let alone to then after a couple months of like really not listening to them get back in a room and hear what's close to a finished product that is beyond anything because there was like some stuff that happened in between some session players that we couldn't get in it whether it's keys or violinist or and there was a couple songs where like I heard something and just would start crying or like go in the alleyway out back and like hyperventilate and call my therapist because I was like I don't like it would bring me back to the emotion that I wrote it about so intensely and you know like that's a big part of it too is you know reworking the the synapses of your brain mm. to those events and like because I wrote these songs therapeutically not intending for them to be heard <laughs> and uh and to hear them heard as a finished product was uh, intense and emotional in a lot of senses. Overwhelming. So yeah, because overwhelming. because it's not yours anymore. Yeah, exactly. You're giving it away. I've talked about that a lot throughout this process of like, I'm giving away a part of myself. And like, that's why this is, and a lot of people are like, why is this so hard for you? I'm like, because these phases of my life that I had to work through, I'm giving that to the world and I can never get it back. And the... I'm and what obviously you can't like know every detail of these situations based on like very ambiguous lyrics but for the most part it's uh, I'm giving away myself and that part of myself I was giving away Frankie to the world and Franklin is the one who can tell those stories call back again nice <laughs> <laughs> What are you thinking? Do you feel like you have more freedom just in life and music because you weren't in the band? Because I couldn't see your brothers backpacking around the world by themselves. No. Oh. I also can't see them walking out in Yankee stadiums in rat costumes or selling merch that says I love cocaine. True. <laughs> so, <you laughs> True. <know? laughs> True. You can get away with these things and they can't. Or like I got my toes sucked at the Franklin Jonas concert. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we gave. I, 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 we, that's the, the merch that we had on tour and Sold like hotcakes. <laughs> Sold like hotcakes, man. That's interesting. Where does that come from? Uh, the foot fetish? No, I. You know, it started as a bit, and then it became like so. I just the jokes about feet became because I started with like I have this. I at one point I realized that I was like, oh, I wonder if I have a wiki feet. And I looked it up, and it's like just my child like paparazzi pictures of my brothers but then at like a beach and like you just zoom in really tightly on my feet Ew. yeah super gross but the thing <laughs> is i wasn't as mad about that as i was the fact that i had a really low score uh. i was really mad about that and so then i like did a whole thing like campaign to bring my score up did you post like fresh feet or hell yeah free uh. feet all the time. That's like terrible. I mean, first of all, it's a business. So like you're missing out a lot of money. I know. I, there was conversations. So maybe of, you didn't need to do the hostels. You know? It, 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 you were a little have, fucking more entrepreneurial. I, yeah, like my feet in Nice and my yeah. feet in Paris <laughs> and my feet paid. in Valencia. Um, that actually would have been a really a great like uh, travel documentary like <laughs> video. Um, instead of like a flat Stanley, it's just my bare foot. But you're surviving <laughs> on the money generated off the, your feet. Hey, it's a business, man. It's a business. But yeah, no, then it just became like so ingrained and it, like it became like such a constant like bit that always works. It's consistent that when I met my label for the first time, they gave me a shirt, which I'm wearing underneath this, but um, with my feet on it and uh, wow. on the back of it, it has the address of my wiki feet. Um, and so it just became like, and then th we were trying to figure out like funny, fun merch and like that was at least in some way more like family friendly than the I heart cocaine's shirts. Um, but it did say, you know, the song by Franklin Jonas. Um, you found the shirt. Yeah. On pizza slime. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and you know, that was, we wanted something that was a bit less, uh, jarring. Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, and there was a bunch of conversations and, and it eventually ended on the idea of, I got my toes sucked at the Franklin Jonas concert to, Harken it back to where it all began with Pizza Slime. Um, shouts out Pizza Slime. I love you guys. Well, right now you got, you got a 4.3 out of 5. So you, you got a good number on Wikipedia. I'm rocking it, dude. Yeah. I'm crushing. Crushing oh, the game. It's like I've never really looked at the wiki feed. I, That's fascinating. It's, a, it's definitely telling if you have looked at <laughs> the wiki feed. 
I'm just saying. Yeah, I want to know. Uh, like, do you have your? Do, who else do, is on there? I don't. Can I don't, you look up Zach Singh? I don't think I have. Let's see. Let's find out, dude. Most people don't think I have legs because they usually see me behind a desk. Oh, uh, you don't have one. Ooh. Because yeah. I don't post my feet on the internet. Nobody You're missing out, that. dude. It's an industry. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm fine. No, yeah, but there was some like, I was very surprised by like some of the people that bought the sh- like whether it's you know like the the toe sucking <laughs> shirt like whether it's, I don't know people who I know or people who I don't know who are like senior citizens who are at this concert, <laughs> like taking their grandkids to the show or like moms buying it for their like 13, 14 year old son. It's like, it's a funny joke. What was it like making your <laughs> live performance debut at Stagecoach? Oh, it was awesome. That it was, was awesome. Crazy. I, uh, it was like I said earlier, like beyond grateful for where I got to start and where I got to, to begin this journey at because people dream of that right people work for all of their lives sometimes to be able to have that opportunity and luckily i was submitted and accepted and i'm not even a country artist i have two songs that are like bridging on country you know what i mean and like if anything then they're more like i don't know just like appalachian inspired i I don't know what to call it (laughs) um but i you know it was crazy we had one show beforehand that was just like a private event and as first shows go, I've been told many times by everyone that was there, it was a great show. However, as the person involved, it was like, I was terrible on this. I did this wrong. I yeah. That was one of the nights where I really, truly played the wrong song on the piano. Like, hardcore. And that's why I stopped playing keys on one of the songs. Because, uh, because it was like, I can't. Like, I don't even want to touch this with a 10 foot pole. It's hard enough for the guitarists in the band because of the way it's like very Beatlesy. It goes from major to minor and back and forth and back and forth. And um, yeah, there was a conversation of like, no, I can't, can't do this. That's after that experience. I'm not even going to try. Um, but stagecoach was amazing because we really had, we were able to have so many people that mean so much to me on stage, which was amazing. Um, Charlie, my producer, uh, Mamie Davis, check her out on SoundCloud. She's incredible. Uh, one of the best songwriters I know. Uh, and like, I met her in 2016. Um, and she taught me about like beat poets and stuff when I was 15 at the time. Right. And told me about, and showed me her poetry and showed me her music. And I fell in love, right. With, with the way that she told her stories. Um, and we also had uh, Julian, our drummer, who is new to my life, but amazing. And and Ali, our violinist, who, like, check out Polyglam, her band. It's so sick. It's so, in like, her life story and the way she makes music, too, is just, like, ridiculous. And uh, it was amazing to be carried by those people in an experience like that where I, you know, subjectively I can look at it and I can be like, oh, I'm undeserving of this opportunity. But it helps when all the people around you, you believe, are deserving of that opportunity. And uh, it definitely became, that was like the, f- I mean, it was like our second show, first show it, to an audience that I didn't invite, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, but that was the first time that I really was like, all right, like we're going to make, we're going to make this into like a, we're a band. Yes, it's my name right now on the header, but this is a band. Oh. And like on tour, this last tour, we, there's a moment during the show, two or three moments where I have requested that members of my band play their music because their music deserves to be heard. Um, it like our, we had a different guitarist on this, like Craig Almquist, uh, uh, so incredible. And he just released a bunch of music and it was like, you please, please play your music. And Mamie has a moment. He has a moment. I finally got Julian, our drummer, to sing a song with me in Toronto. And, like, <laughs> you know, it's um, it's special. And I think that it really became a family affair. Are you going back on tour? I hope so. I dream so. I, I We're looking for tours to go on. If anyone wants me to open up for them, please, <laughs> I just want to open up for people. Again, Sewer Rat, waiting for your ears. Link in the description <laughs> below. Uh, what are you thinking, Dan? I just want to see the rat head on real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't realize, I, I should have walked in with it on, but wait, I'll take the headphones off. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good, that. dude. Where'd you go? 
Just to see where we're at. Wow. wow. Do, do you sing with the head on at your show or do you take the head off to sing? I, I can't sing with the head on. I've I've thought about it. I, I've <laughs> thought about adding a mic in there because there's like a battery hookup. Oh, wow. Oh. For like a fan, which honestly I should use. But the thing is that I only wear it for like, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds. But it would be cool if I came out in the first song I played. I did have it on the whole time. Um, but it is cool to like have the reveal and then like I <laughs> scream and I take it off. And it's a fun moment. I like it. Thank you. I like it a lot. It, he likes you. Oh, he loves you. you, and he's grateful to uh, to be to be brought on this this amazing show. Uh, can I ask a question that may be yes. a little controversial, but I'm very curious about it? Oh God, here we go. What? What do you think it's going to be? What? No. What do you think I'm going to ask about? You got nervous? No, I have no idea. I didn't get nervous, but I just like you said, controversial. I've been on, I've been on, I've been on podcasts before where they say that, and then it's like the craziest, most like outlandish stuff that. You could ask somebody. So, oh no! I, mean, I just want to know about something you did. Well, it was oh, okay. you and a couple of other TikTokers, and I am curious about it. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yes. How does one end up wearing a necklace for Scientology? <laughs> I like the ambiguous, like the 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 mystery of that night. Um, it's <laughs> what they lure you into a big blue building <laughs> on the sunset. What the fuck? I will say that I found it at a thrift store, and no bullshit. Oh, I did. <laughs> oh, I did. And it was five bucks. Five dollars. And it's legit. Like, it's like, because no one wants to, f no one wants to buy that. <laughs> no one wants to buy that. Clearly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think for legal reasons, I like to, to keep the mystery of that <laughs> night. But I think, you know, it's, it definitely was, there's, I've heard some really crazy versions of the story told from a lot of different people who were or were not in the room and it's uh yeah wait so it was one necklace that you passed around and all wore or did you all have your own necklaces no it was just just mine <laughs> wait <laughs> what yeah i'm gonna well, leave so it i'm really... gonna leave it there now <laughs> okay you guys did so you, i'm assuming nobody knew no they but they did yeah but see but then you know you wake up the next day and then well, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it there. Leave it there. You know the currency over there is who you who you bring into the church, right? You know, so whoever. Hey, man, I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, By the way, I, don't I, tell them that. They'll take everything you got. No, I promise you, I am not. I, I am not a. Uh... Shouts out Zenu. Uh... <laughs> no, I am not a Scientologist. I was having a long conversation with a Scientologist the other day. Very fascinating. Some he's, of them are. First of all, he's an ex Scientologist. Oh, you are? No, you. He, no, no, he's not. not. The oh. person I was talking to. Damn, <laughs> you made it seem like I was the ex Scientologist. No, you're talking about you're talking about my friend though. <laughs> yeah, actually, was talking to him at the variety party. Oh, really? So maybe they were there watching you. Oh my god, I didn't even see you at the party. No, well, I wanted to bring that up. We made eye contact twice, and I was like, and you just, I was like, oh, maybe he doesn't remember me. Well, oh no, fair, you I only met over Zoom. I totally. I'm so I sorry. I don't even. I. I <laughs> no, I know. I definitely. If I had recognized that eye contact, I made a lot of eye contact with people that night that like I didn't mean to make eye contact yeah, so with. Did I. And yeah, you get it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm so sorry that no. If no, I had, that's fine. if I had actually like <laughs> recognized the moment of that eye contact, because like I'm now turning my brain, scanning it, and I don't remember it. But I'm so sorry. No, that's why. Especially if it was later in the evening, I definitely <laughs> might not have. It, it was. And then Zach, Zach was like, "You remember you met him only on Zoom?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, you're right." That's also potentially yeah, yeah. part of it. I'm regardless. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. I really am. He <laughs> only spent two nights crying. Okay, it's, that's good. He's been okay. That's good. At, at least it wasn't. No, that's all right. We made up some good, some good eye contact here, and we made yeah, no, dude, we're we're on it. We're, we're on it tonight. Yeah, we're yeah. locked in Look tight. No, and I promise you, if I ever, if I ever, <laughs> if we're ever at another variety party, I'm not talking to you, but I'm making a lot of eye contact with you, Zach. You come straight and to I'm me. just coming straight to you, dog. <laughs> even if, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> Who? That's, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> but like, that's like really bold to say that we're gonna get invited to any other variety. You event crushed ever. it, dude. You were amazing. What are you talking amazing. about? You owned that red carpet man i i like i i was standing there for a while like because I, I was like because there was a big line to talk to you i want everyone to be aware there was a big line <laughs> to talk to zach on that red carpet and i was standing there for a while Not true. and then you were talking to steve lacy like what and then and i was in the same room mind you crazy but um no yeah i was i i i quickly decided all right 
He's got bigger fish to fry than this guy. I'm going to see him on Tuesday. We'll leave it where it is. I had a good time. I, yeah. Dude, I had a blast because cool. I saw like so many people I grew up with that yeah. I haven't seen in so long. I only saw a couple enemies. It was good. Oh, really? You got, you, you got ops? One. Ooh. Or, or, how, many, how many were there? <laughs> that's, that's the number. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, carry the two. No, just one. Just one. You created a new one there. Oh, Can shit, I ask I you a controversial question? I did. Yeah. Who Who was the op? Oh, I can't do that. Uh, oh. I, I can't do that without creating one of the biggest stirs on the internet. Hey, stream store rat. <laughs> There's a link in the description below. <laughs> go go go. Final thoughts? Well, I just I'm trying to figure out your schedule now. Did you go to that party? Fly back to New York for the Yankee Stadium show? Now you fly, flew back for this. So I ended up not going to the Yankee Stadium show because there was a an emergency with my parents' two lovely golden retrievers, um, and yeah. so I was babysitting them. Uh, I was dog sitting them, which uh, I love those girls. But were are you going to the LA show? I don't, uh, now we are fingers. Yeah, fingers. I'll All right, I'll that. see what I can do. You can come with us. <laughs> we'll, we'll mob out. We'll mob deep, and I'll just make eye contact with you and talk to you the whole time. We'll, and we'll like, hold hands and everything. I'm not there. <laughs> you're not there. You're not there. <laughs> Actually, you're gonna sit like two rows behind no, us. You the no, you're, you're on dog duty that night. You take care of the dogs that night. That's fine. Yeah, but no, I'm really excited for the the Vegas show and the uh, the Dodger Stadium show. It's gonna be amazing. I uh, I wish I could have been there in New York, but that being said, I think. Uh, there was a there was a massive crew there to so I think it's gonna be but I regardless it's like the coolest show ever they play so many songs it's awesome they play so much and it's like they play B sides too which is like kind of rare right now yeah. if you're doing like that level of tour where it's you're playing everything yeah, but they they're doing exactly what they've always done which is in so in tune with the fans yeah. and they really know how to serve us them properly. Yeah. And they keep Me. them fed. Yeah, it, it is. It, they it's, just do it so well. Yeah, no, they've I, done I, it since, f, f, since the dawn of time. I remember seeing them perform the Willowbrook Mall. Oh yeah, oh yeah, fucking man, in Wayne, New Jersey, and there was not that many people there. No, I, I, we had uh, a person uh, come to uh, the Troubadour shows that I did. Who they were like, oh, you recognize me? No, dog, you were at the every radio Disney show my yeah. brothers did. Like I know you. Like there was times when my mom was like we know you, you can watch him for a second. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's so to have that, uh, like there's people from day one who are still being appreciated for the level of commitment that they've had to like this massive machine that has gone in every direction and come back home, you know, is spectacular. It's do I wish they played Nick Jonas, and the administration songs? Oh, yes. dude, by the way, legendary, I think that's legendary, actually, legendary. Album. I, you just give me full body goosebumps because yes. that show at the beacon theater, I went both nights. Incredible. It is one of the greatest Incredible. shows ever. First of all, he, Nick takes Prince's band, right? Yeah. It's, it's all the people who supported Prince for the most part. And I think some players from Steely Dan, too. some of the crazy, the craziest musicians does a live recording album at, dude. in Nashville. <laughs> and like, it's, Truly, like a masterpiece, masterclass, yeah, yeah, yeah. masterclass. And by the way, and he's eighteen that's years old. What's insane? Nobody like so underrated. We're gonna put a link in the description below. Yeah, the Nick Jonas administration. <laughs> yes, yes. Th that work. It's waiting for you because we almost covered who I am because oh. it, it's the same. There's a similar chord progression to one of my bandmates' songs, and I was like, "What if we did a medley of your song into who I am? Would you be down with that?" I just feel like this. <laughs> I need to listen to it. Like I feel this full body impulse. It is. So underrated. It is truly so spectacular. Can we say the same about Joe Jonas's Fast Life? Is it as is it equal to the Nick Jonas administration? He has Little Wayne on okay. an album. Okay. We'll give it to him. We'll it is to him. really <laughs> tight. We'll it it is really tight, dude. We're gonna have. But, but <laughs> we'll give it to you. But Little Wayne's a big deal. But yeah. then there's a DNC. Look like a butterfly, smell like a flower. <laughs> that yo, that verse goes hard, bro. Lil Wayne on a Joe Jonas track. What? <laughs> we'll put a link in the description <laughs> below. Fast for life, <laughs> fast life by Joe Jonas. You can listen to all of it on Amazon Music. <laughs> True. No, uh, you're a real one, dude. I'm a fan. Like I'm, and I'm a day one fan of them. And I think that it's. I think you know. It's sometimes people uh, can misinterpret like. And be like, oh, I love the way you make fun of your. I'm like, I don't make fun of my brothers. I just am a fan. Like, and I, you know, I talk about their music and their careers the same way like their Twitter stands do. 
And it's just that I think that because of my association, it looks like I can be making fun of them. When no, dude, I just am obsessed with them. I love their career and I love what they've done. Oh, because you love them. Yeah, dude. They're amazing people. They're like the best guys I know. So <laughs> they are your brothers. They are my brothers. They're my heroes. They're my role models, man. So well, you can listen to Sewer Rat and uh, we'll put a link in the description below f again for uh, Nick Jones and the administration <laughs> and Joe Jonas Fast Life. <laughs> uh, it's all waiting there for you. Oh, man. Fine. Giving the people what they deserve to hear. We're feeding you. You're welcome. Uh, anything else? No, it's just cool that you and Kevin can work together, but we can't talk about that. So I know it. it's it's so sad, but yeah, uh, next time. it's an amazing. Yeah. Listen, if you have me back, I'm always, I'm always down. I'm always down. Uh, I'll, I'll get a different, I can get you all rat costumes. Yeah. If, what if we did a podcast and we're all, or a, a show and we're all doing, uh, Kinda raw work. For it. and we have the heads on too. I like that. The whole time. Yeah, that's actually a dream. I would love to do this shit with a bag over my head or a rat head on. What also, we, I didn't talk about it, but have you ever seen the movie Frank no. with, uh, Michael Fassbender? Big inspiration for the sewer rat. Big inspiration. It's a, mm. he wears, he's a tortured, like, sort of Daniel Johnston inspired artist and he wears a paper mache head of his own head at all the time. Ah. Oh, he never takes it off. I like that. Yeah. It's really, really beautiful film. But mm. sorry, I interrupted with that. Wait, why the fuck do I want to start living that way? It's interesting, like man. That. It's a cool vibe. It's a really mm. but it also talks about obviously the uh the trauma and the mental uh gymnastics that would cause yeah, one someone to, to wear a paper mache head of their own head. Yeah. All the time, every day, and not shower. Fascinating. Yeah. Damn. Interesting the, stuff. The outfit almost gives furry, but not, you know? Yeah, that's, that's been a, so when we, we <laughs> were filming a bunch of, like, uh, like, uh, little videos, um, to, um, you know, the canvas, the, behind the, the music when it's on different platforms, and I was filming them all in this costume in New York, walking around in the costume, and the amount of, like, teenagers who like got really pissed I'm like ew furry gross <laughs> get out of here with that <laughs> it was a, there was a couple of different groups of people who were definitely not into it thinking that it was a furry thing when it's not but like all respect to furries yeah let them love let them live you yeah. fucks you were also walking around giving people flowers in a rat costume and yeah that's what i'm talking about yeah. it was during that that i got called <laughs> yeah. the furry a bunch <laughs> yeah we did and then like i got a tattoo in a subway station um uh, in the costume. That's really dirty. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a great tattoo. What is it? It's a, it's the rat. It's the rat. Oh, then we have infected? hats with the with the same uh, design. That's did he get infected? No, sick. It's fine. Yeah, I, you know, it's. I think my I, maybe I'm just lucky, but like, I've taken really poor care of some of my tattoos, and they're they're fine. Fingers and toes. Yeah, man. I mean, like, I got like stick and pokes that did not get love, but. They're still on my body. You're still here and your limbs are still attached. They are. They are, surprisingly. Listen to Sewer Rat. Thank you. Link in the description below. <laughs> you good? Yep. Franklin Jonas, everybody. Thanks I love you guys. Here. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having me. You're the best. I'm so grateful. All the love in the universe, guys.